Look, I'm gonna be completely honest. The only way to properly make good money in your teenagers is to do. So ever since I was 13, I knew for a fact I wanted to make a living online. And in my teenage years, I went from making $2 a month to then barely doing any work and making a few hundred pounds in my sleep. And today I'm gonna be compiling literally every single thing I've learned. And the best bit is it's completely free. I'm not putting any behind a paywall. There's no courses, there's no second video. This is literally it. Looking at my analytics though, only 15% of people who are watching this are actually subscribed. So if you're thinking about subscribing, just do it, it's free. You can always unsubscribe if you decide you hate me. And yeah, it helps the channel out a lot. So let me just explain some ground rules here. They may not be what you want to hear, but if you're serious about making money in your teens, you're going to want to listen up. Firstly, I'm sorry to be a buzzkill, but everything takes time. The first year of this whole experience is going to be hard. You're going to be working below minimum wage. You're going to be tired most of the time. You're going to want to quit. And look, I hope you appreciate this information because it's not in my best interest to deter you from this video and make you click off. But I'd rather make people who aren't serious about this click off now than mislead them throughout the whole of this video and just give crap advice. But something that can really help with the initial grinding stage is doing something you actually enjoy. So look, if you love creating music, the best way for you to make money is gonna be to produce beats or write for people online. Obviously, there's just a few examples to name the least, but a general rule I like to use is you should pick what you enjoy and do one of these three things. Either sell your services online through freelancing. You can sign up for sites such as Fiverr.com and Upwork.com and work for people online. Two, educate other people on the subject you are passionate about. You can do this through tutoring, making YouTube videos like I'm doing right now, and number three is to create a product and brand around a problem that needs to be solved in your field. So for example, editing is really boring and I'm pretty sure myself editing this can agree. Well, I could create a product or service online that makes editing 10 times easier. Now look, that's great and all, but I understand most of you don't really know what you like. So throughout the remainder of this video, I'm gonna be going through in detail ways you can make passive sustainable income. Meaning that you can earn money overnight and it isn't just gonna crash and collapse at any second. Feel free to rewatch some parts, pause this video, take out a notebook, because I'm gonna be going through a lot of detailed stuff very fast. So my first way is gonna be Instagram theme pages and I hands down believe if you've never done anything in the internet space of making money, this is going to be your best bet. So here is exactly what it is, what you need to start doing it and how you can actually start to make money from it. Put simply, an Instagram theme page is literally just an Instagram page that focuses on one topic. This topic is often referred to as a niche. So if I ever use niche later on in this video, it basically just means topic. Generally on an Instagram theme page, you will not be making your own content and you'll be reposting other people's videos. You may be saying, that's unethical. How are you gonna avoid copyright? Well, firstly, you're always gonna wanna be crediting the people you find the videos from. So it's actually a win-win because you're never claiming that you own the video yourself and you're actually giving them more traction, therefore building them a bigger audience and building you a bigger audience at the same time. So in theory, this sounds great, right? Well, thing is 95% of theme pages fail in the first month and don't actually make it off the ground. So through two years of running Instagram theme pages, here is my best advice to help you succeed and stand out from the rest. Firstly, username, name, bio, profile picture, keep it clean. In this day and age, simple is always better than complicated. If you need a logo, I suggest you use canva.com and screenshot the logo so you don't actually have to pay for it. To keep your bio clean, I always suggest to use a format looking like this. Emoji, some information about your account, new line, do that three to four times. And I typically suggest in your bio that you should always have a call to action at the bottom. By call to action, I mean telling your followers to do something, for example, follow you, check out your new website, follow your other page. For your username, try to avoid underscores and periods. An example of a good name would be that makeup vibe. An example of a less professional name would be makeup.vibe.2020 underscore for you. And finally, for your name, make it a shorter and more simpler version of your username. So for my first example, I would use makeup vibe. So now let's move on to your feed and what you're actually posting. And this is hands down the most important thing about a page. So I'm gonna be giving you this strategy that I've used for the past two years to consistently find viral content on Instagram to repost. Firstly, go on a hashtag that represents your page. If you're a makeup page, go on a hashtag makeup videos. Then go to the top post on that hashtag and check out each account that is posting videos. Keep on doing this until you stumble into a page that is currently doing very well and is 
typically under around 250,000 followers. Look at their posts, see which ones are getting the most likes and engagement. If your Instagram is currently not displaying likes, you can go over to your account settings and then switch it to a brand account and that should fix it. I would compare that average amount of likes with each post and then accordingly pick the top five best performers on their page. Okay, so your content and your page is completed. Now, how do you actually get traffic? So I suggest a follow for follow strategy, but it's more kind of an engagement strategy because you're not actively asking people to follow you back. And I typically recommend you do this until you reach two to 3,000 followers, as this is typically when Instagram picks up your account and starts promoting your posts in the algorithm more. So here is exactly how that engagement strategy works. First of all, again, go on a hashtag that represents your page. Go onto the most recent section, scroll down and just like every new post. And any post you see in that section, similar to the content you're posting on your own page that has likes, you are gonna wanna go onto every single person that has liked that post and follow them. The closer the videos are to your own, the better results you're gonna see. The reason I do this method, and for example, not just going onto a massive random post and following everybody that has liked it, is because the aim of doing this is that you want the person you are following to see the notification that you have engaged with some of their content. In return, they're gonna go, oh, I haven't seen this person on my page before, let's check his account out. And if you have good content, good feed, your stuff looks clean, they're gonna be like, oh, this is kind of up my field, you know, I post similar stuff to this and I wanna show back some support to this person. If you're wondering how long it will take for you to get your first paycheck, I suggest a first take on sponsorships once you're past the 10k mark. And this all depends on your engagement and what niche you're in, but you're probably gonna be getting sponsorship posts for around 10 to $20. And yeah, I understand that's not that much, that's not gonna pay the bills, but the thing is that will increase over time. And then if you factor in that you're gonna be running several of these pages at once, after about a year of doing so, you can build like a decent amount of passive income just from running these pages. And just taking sponsorships isn't the only way you can actually make money on your page. You can make your own dropshipping business, print on demand business, you can run on affiliate links. There are literally countless ways you can monetize your Instagram theme page. And I'm gonna be making a video about the best ways to monetize your Instagram page very shortly on this channel. Okay, so that wraps up Instagram theme pages and how you can make money out of them. But let's move on to the second way how you can make money with no experience online in your teens and that is gonna be to sell your services or outsource work. So I'm gonna be covering two things in this section and let's first start off with selling your own services. Typically for selling your own services, I recommend Fiverr and that is simply because I find it easier to get your first few customers on there. Plus I think it's just more mainstream recognized than like all of the other freelance pages. Therefore, if you're directing somebody from like Facebook or Twitter, they're more likely to probably trust Fiverr than just some random freelancing site online. So go on to fiverr.com and make your own selling profile. You have to fill in a few information about your education, but don't tell anybody I told you this, but you can actually fake what university you went to. They're not going to require a certificate. Make a gig and title it something that a lot of people are going to be searching for. Optimize the description and the tags of your gig for search results on Fiverr. And then I'd always recommend adding free pricing packages and pricing it so it seems the most expensive option is the best value. But on a real though, I haven't sold on Fiverr for a few few years now, so I thought it would be a little bit interesting to go and see how much money I actually made off of doing Fiverr. How much orders I completed, what gigs I was doing, what exactly worked for me, so hopefully it can better your chances of getting a successful gig off the ground and so you can start making some money. Alright, so boom, earnings, and I'm pretty sure this is about $700. So boom, the net income after Fiverr has taken their 20% is just about $700, and if I go onto my orders, I've completed, here we go, so I've completed only 11 orders, which puts my average order rate at just under $65. I used to run two gigs on Fiverr, one of which was video editing and then the other one was professional Amazon product photography. And now that product photography one did bits for me and I was getting orders for about $200 every other week. Just to put it into perspective, on my fifth or sixth order, I was probably making around about $40 an hour. So if you know you market your stuff right, you can properly earn some good money. One thing I highly recommend to anybody that is thinking of selling on Fiverr is to create your own product video. 
Although I'm not gonna lie, mine were really cringy and I hate watching them back. They made me stand out from so many other people who were anonymous. Nobody knew who they were, therefore buyers wouldn't trust them. Even if you might not have a camera, use your phone, edit it on some free online software. Trust me, it makes you stand out from the rest. And if you're being authentic in your video, that will put your chances 10 times higher than anybody who hasn't taken that simple step. A few other tips to get your gigs off the ground is if you have any existing social medias, feel free to promote them through there. Try and not pick a topic that is being oversaturated. The reason I think my Amazon product photography did so well is because nobody was doing Amazon product photography. They were just doing generalized product photography. And that was my USP point. And that is where I think I got a large majority of my buyers from. So if you're thinking of doing something, for example, graphic design, you don't even have to switch it up entirely. Maybe just make it specific to one platform. For example, YouTube banner graphic design, stuff like that is going to have much more of a direct appeal. And it's going to make you look more of a specialist, which can be more appealing to buyers. So now let's get on to outsourcing. And most of which I just said will also apply to the outsourcing marketing section. But in short, outsourcing is when you hire somebody else to do the work. That may seem a little vague, but let me just put it into an example. So you get an order on Fiverr for product photography. You then go onto another website, for example, upwork.com. You hire a product photographer and you just relay the replies and then take the difference. Now I'm gonna be completely honest. I haven't outsourced myself just yet, but I'm gonna be giving my best advice for what exactly I would do, because I don't think it's too far off Fiverr selling in general. Firstly, I would follow all of the advice about creating a good looking gig. Make sure you're not in an oversaturated field. Wait until you get your first inquiry and then find somebody doing the exact same thing on another platform who is preferably charging cheaper so you can make the most amount of profit. From there, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you were just gonna be the middleman. The only disadvantage to this is as you can probably tell, you're gonna have to be online quite recently. There's gonna be a lot of copy and pasting, but surprisingly, this is quite a mainstream and legitimate way people actually make money nowadays. So now this was really my call to fame, and that is gonna be to make YouTube videos slash make a YouTube channel. Now this is where I've made the majority of the money in my team. And surprisingly, there is a method and a way where you don't even need to be skilled at making videos yourself, where you can simply just compile and repost content that is already on YouTube. But just before I get onto that method, how do you actually make money from YouTube? Because I know there's a kind of a gray area with this subject, like how much do you actually make? Well, first and foremost, from this channel you're watching right now, I'm currently making around about 500 pounds a month. It's not much right now, but considering I've only got about 12 videos on my channel, I think that's a pretty decent amount. But okay, how do I actually make that money? Money. So the majority of my money comes from YouTube AdSense. And this is in short where YouTube displays ads in between and in front of your YouTube video. And you get paid 55% of what the advertisers pay YouTube. Now how much you get paid per 1,000 views can drastically change. On this channel, I do better than average and I get around about $5 per 1,000 views. I used to run a few gaming channels and roughly I'd get around about $2 per 1,000 views. But I'm expecting a video like this to maybe even make $10 per 1,000 views. And I had a dropshipping video I uploaded about five months ago that actually made $20 per every 1,000 views it gathered. Some more dropshipping videos coming soon. As I've said, your ad revenue can depend on what niche you're in, but it also depends on how long your video actually is. And if you haven't heard the phrase of YouTubers making their videos over 10 minutes long, well, basically, if your YouTube video reaches over 10 minutes, you can start adding mid-roll ads in between, and from there, you can make some extra income. Hence why I scripted this video so it will be over 10 minutes. I gotta eat too. Another huge way you can make money on YouTube is through sponsorships and promotions with companies. Typically, these companies will reach out to you on your business email, you discuss prices, Prices, and from there, you typically make around about 10 to $20 per 1,000 views you get. So what exactly is this way I mentioned earlier on in this video about you making money on YouTube without uploading videos? Now, I'm pretty sure you've seen a ton of these channels, but in short, what they do is they get non-copyrighted content and they compile them into one video, like those try not to laugh ones, those cat videos, even a lot of these videos titled, she tried to breathe underwater for the first time. To get non-copyrighted content, you can actually go onto YouTube go into the more section and you can go into this thing called Creative Commons. And every single video that comes up under that topic is completely non-copyrighted free and you can use it in your videos. To download videos on YouTube, you don't need YouTube Premium, don't worry. You can simply just copy and paste the 
link, go onto a YouTube MP4 converter, make sure you're not actually downloading a virus, paste the link, convert it, and then you should get an MP4 file on your computer of that exact video. From there, you can use a free online editing service, chop the clips up, add a few titles here and there, and upload it to YouTube. So look, I'm not gonna lie here, it is very, very hard to get promoted on YouTube. But put simply, YouTube only wants a viewer to click on your video and watch it all the way through. Typically nowadays, text doesn't do too well on YouTube. If I had loads of text plastered over my face, how you can get rich as a teenager, most people would see it, be like, nah, I can't be asked to read that, I've already read the title, and click on a video that looks a little more interesting. I to find very simple thumbnails work very effectively. But look, YouTube is not one of those things that you're just gonna blow up overnight and you're not gonna be making money from it initially because to start getting paid from ads, you're going to need 1,000 subscribers and over 4,000 watch hours of content time. Okay, so I really hope you extracted some value out of this video and I do just have to say, I'm giving out all this information for free and I do have to ask, please can you go down below, leave a like on this video and share it to anybody else that may find this useful. Subscribe if you are new and if you're interested in seeing what happened when I drop ship for seven days, click this video and you'll find out. Trust me, you won't regret it. You may have noticed that this is the video that gave me $20 per 1,000 views, but I can promise you that's nothing to do with why I'm promoting it. Um, just, just click.